Hello Stromar designers, welcome back to this EPA swim training. We're on to part 11. If you can believe that, we have a free hydrology terms guide and free WWHM 2012 course that you can get in the description down below. It's 100% free, uh, six, seven pages of hydrology terms, defining them. So if you're learning about hydrology or need a refresher, uh, that's great for you. And if you wanna learn about continuous simulation software, uh, that free course is also available. But now we're into part 11. We went over the basic tutorial. Now we're into sample projects. We did site runoff, drainage, and detention pond design, and now we're on to low impact development. I'm gonna open that one up. Let's see what we got here. Like I said, I'm gonna be modeling. I just couldn't find the photo. Okay, found the image. We're all good there. So like I said, I'm gonna be modeling in real time, just like the previous previous ones, and you might see, see me make some mistakes, but that's fine. Uh, we're gonna model this one together. Um, this one's got about four steps, so let's see what we got here. So for the low impact development model, this example illustrates how the low impact development, and I'm going to refer to it as LID from this point forward, modeling feature works. The data file represents a 29 acre mixed use subdivision that has been divided into nine subcatchments. Six different types of LID processes have been defined and deployed within those subcatchments rain barrels and an infiltration trench in subcatchment S1, street planters in S4, a green roof and permeable pavement area in S5 and vegetation swales and subcatchments swale 3, 4, and 6. After loading the example, select the LID controls category from the data browser. Okay, LID controls from the data browser. Let's see what we got here. So, LID controls right here. Let's see what types of LID controls and their design parameters have been defined for the project. So we can see the green roof, here, porous pavement, planter boxes, the infill trench, the rain barrels here, and then of course our, our vegetative swale there. Um, then use the view query command to locate subcatchments that have been assigned LID controls or select LID usage as the subcatchment theme to view on the map. So we go to view, Query, we want to find subcatchments. Uh, let's see, S1. Or maybe just one. Three items found. Okay, good. So we got here, here's some of the subcatchments there. Uh, four, five items found. Subcatchment four, so we can view the various subcatchments there. Um, bring up the property editor, editor for a selected subcatchment and click on the LID controls property to see how a particular LID process was deployed within the subcatchment. Okay, so um, bring up the property editor for a selected subcatchment. Okay. This is for S1 property editor. or we can find S1 on the map. Let's look at that. Um, and we can also see it there. Bring up the, uh, so okay, bring up the property editor, run the example and view a summary of LID performance in the LID results section. Okay, so let's run this. Unsuccessful, continuity was pretty good. Okay, so that's set up right. Um, Run the example, view a summary of the LID performance in the LID results section of the summary report. Okay. LID performance. Here we go. So we can see the total inflow in inches, evaporation loss in inches, infill loss in inches, surface outflow, drain outflow, initial storage, final storage, and then the continuity error. So we can see that here for all the subcatchments and the LID control for each. So that's pretty useful there. Edit one of the LID units deployed within a subcatchment, e.g. the green roof and subcatchment S5, to produce a detailed report file for it. Then rerun the example and open the report file with a text editor or with Excel to view a detailed time history of water fluxes and storage levels in the LID unit. Okay, edit one of the LID units deployed within a subcatchment. Um, let's see here. So S5 had the porous pavement. 
or the green roof in subcatchment uh, five. Okay, let's see if we can modify that one. So I gotta remember what, okay, LID controls, green roof. Um, let's make the surface slope 1.5%. Let's, let's make that change, rerun. Um, we wanna go back to report summary, LID. So we can see the change here. Um, to produce a detailed report file for it. Then rerun the example and open the report file with a text editor. Okay, so we should find a report file. Uh, let's see. Let me reread this again. Um, edit one of the LID units deployed within a subcatchment to produce a detailed report file for it. Reporting. S5, add. Okay, there we go. Run. And um, we should have additional report. Here's the LID control summary here, so we can see some of those results there. Maybe that's what it was referring to. Then de to determine the effect that LID usage has on reducing runoff from the subdivision, from the last run made with LID controls present, View the status report to determine the volume of surface runoff produced. See the runoff quantity table. Uh, 10 to the sixth gallons in volume seems to be the report there. For the two-year design storm, it should be 0.23 inches. I'm gonna find 0.23 inches. Two-year. I can see acre feet here. See if I can find where that's located. The runoff quantity continuity table is what I'm looking for. Here we go. Um, so this, oh, depth inches. There we go. We can see the total there. Then select the LID controls category from the project browser and delete each of the controls except for the swale. Okay. Uh, Swale or swales, except for the swale. Okay, well, let's delete. Uh, remove, remove, remove. And then we're gonna leave the swale here. Okay, that's done. I'm assuming we're gonna rerun it. Rerun the project and note the surface runoff value in the status report. But the two-year storm should be 0.49 inches, showing that the LID controls provide more than 50% reduction in the runoff. Uh, summary report here. Actually, I want status. There we go. So if we go back to runoff quantity continuity, we do have additional runoff there. Surface runoff 0.49 inches. So there it is. To determine the LID impact for other design storms included in the project, reload the project file and repeat the steps above using a different choice of rainfall time series for the rain gauge. For example, for the 10-year design storm, LID usage provides a 37% reduction in surface runoff. So just for a larger storm event, it's gonna provide, provide less reduction because there's just more overall runoff occurring and it can't handle the capacity. So that's how to use LID and, e LID and EPA SWIM. LID is also available in WWHM 2012 and WIM SWIM, which you can learn about in the description uh, for more inclusive modeling with those elements. So uh, that's an overview of this project. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.